then from where did this game come from? Relax. Breathe. <laughs> Try to remember. Message on the phone. Black, stay away from the handover site. We have the girl. You cannot save her. Let this run its course. Black, is that me? Abandoned building with missing windows and graffiti. Save the girl. Armed only with silence pistol and your phone, you're making your way to another abandoned building. Inside, a military grade drone. The situation is becoming even more dangerous. There is a burning cigarette on the desk. Someone was here recently. A chair on the ground with a rope next to it. Clothes soaked with blood. The girl. Slowly making your way inside the building. You quietly dispatch a guard. You are getting closer to the girl. Another guard. You can't avoid confrontation, so you take out the corner gun. Yeah, I'm monitoring it. Headshot. There she is, two more guards. The adrenaline is high, everything feels like moving in slow motion. Aim for the head, one guard down. Aim for the other, he is down too. Rush to the girl. There is a bomb strapped to her and the timer is counting down. You try to help, you enter the code the girl gives you, but despite all your efforts. There was a girl, a bomb, what is going on? text message on the phone. Building B? You make your way inside it. What is going on? Where am I? Who are you? Who am I? What is real? Your name is Cole Black, ice cold mercenary trapped in an abandoned asylum, no memories and strapped to his head the Pandora headset. His mysterious captor, Red, explains you are there by your own will for a treatment, or so he claims, to try to remember. The device allows you to relieve memories, helping you in the process. But you were there with the girl and now here in this godforsaken place. What is going on? Now it's not the time for questions. You have to proceed with your treatment. So you have to explore the asylum and try to help yourself. But the place is not abandoned as it seems at first. You are not sure what is going on. The asylum is full with other prisoners, ex-military, missing people, all the range, probably prone to violence. But some seems like you, saying, trap, wanting to get out, begging you to help them. Will you release them or obey Red's instructions not to intervene? You have to remember one thing, whatever you do, there will be consequences. You will be judged. The atmosphere is tense and scary. You are creeping slowly, scanning the environment with your phone for clues, reading papers and documents, piecing the puzzle. How deep is the rabbit hole? Searching thoroughly what is unlocked leads you to a room with newspaper clippings, a poster, a business card, floor plan of a building, schematic of a weapon and a glowing picture. Now it's time to steal the corner gun. The first hour of the game is amazing. Not that the rest is bad, but it sets tonally the game. On one hand is the asylum with all of its colorful characters and the interactions with them. The whole section is quite scary, it's part horror game. At some point in the game you will get a chance to visit your very own mind palace. Here you will see all the evidence you gather. They are pinned on a big board with lines linking them. It's a very cool idea in terms of the story if you feel like you want to invest more and see the broader picture and also will play memories to try and find every single evidence. Also if you collect all the evidence you will be rewarded with a new gun and some additional info. How this happens, I'll leave for you to find out. The second part is Black's memories where you're going to start piecing the puzzle by relieving what you've lost. They are not in order of the events but jumble. By the end it hits you hard like a train. Here's where the action and drama is. Those two sections, the memories and the asylum, with their different tones, mix really well in one coherent package. If I had to describe the story with just one word, it will be consequences. It's about people making decisions and not thinking or maybe even not give a shit what they might cause. It's also about greed, envy, regrets. What I love about the story is how morally great most of the main cast is. Some are certainly not people you want to have a chat with. Others takes time to show their motivations, show their true colors, their written flow, like we, people are. 
the story is grounded in reality, sprinkled with some believable sci-fi elements. The Pandora headset is an excellent tool for unraveling the mystery and it offers two distinct atmosphere and one emotional story with some twists and turns. On my second playthrough I start noticing a lot of details in the environment changed by my actions. As I said you'll be judged for your choices. They are not too many and they don't feel too impactful in the grand scheme of things but they offer some nice variety for a second playthrough and depending on some of those choices you will get two different endings. Both have their merits but I prefer the bad ending which have just one change from the good one but it feels like the lesser of two evils. Let's put it that way. On my two playthroughs I got both times the good ending which I shouldn't I guess I've messed up somewhere with the requirements for the other ending. When it comes to gameplay, the shooting is with the least advancements compared to Deadfall Adventures but it's still fun. The game is not only about shooting, the uniqueness comes from two things, your cell phone and the corner gun. The phone is probably the most important item, you scan for clues, has thermal vision, always have a map of the environment and a UV light for spotting invisible clues. The phone is always attached to the corner gun and you always aim through it. The gun is quite unique. As the name suggests, you can shoot around corners without even peeking. It's great if you want to go stealth. Of course, it's not the only weapon. The others are fairly standard. Some you got from dead enemies but others have to be unlocked. Unfortunately, I couldn't play with all of them. You need to collect all of the evidence of each level. I managed to unlock just one. In the beginning of each level, you can access your mind palace to arm yourself with, with what you have unlocked. I always appreciate when exploration is awarded. Here it's not necessary but beneficial. As I mentioned, besides the guns, there are some additional lore and in story driven games such as this it's worth searching and scanning thoroughly every corner. You can go in full rumble mode but you can easily die. For my first playthrough I went full stealth with the occasional silent takedown. This playstyle is what you expect, it's a line of sight stealth. The map shows enemies from vision. The first question that popped in my head was how far they can see. After some testing I found they can notice movement even if you are far away which is good because the stealth would be way easier and not that fun. There are three stages of awareness represented with colors on the screen. White indicates that they just notice something but won't do anything, on yellow they investigate, red well safeties are down and everyone knows your location. It's serviceable line of sight system. I often let someone notice me or shoot near him to make the enemy investigate so I can move around them without they noticing me. Later levels, the whole sneaking is a bit trial and error but I never felt frustrated because it didn't take me too long to see from where to sneak. I rarely kill someone, it wasn't necessary, it's just something I wanted to do, not imposed by the game. When you are sneaky, often things in the environment can be materialized to block the visions of the enemy or to open a new path. This is done by the phone. There is a reason why you can do that and it's explained early on. There are some puzzles to be solved and they are all based around the capabilities of the phone. They are few and far between and don't hold the progress. I really like them, nothing too complicated or way too easy. One was a bit challenging because I didn't realize there is a hint in the form of a riddle but still I managed to solve it without help. The shooting is, well, I'll tell you after my second playthrough. Stop acting like you're in a damn video game. It's okay. I can safely say I like it a bit more than Deadfall Adventures, but what ruins it for me is the light auto aim. It's not on all weapons, pistols and the corner guard are not affected. The game is not built around big firefights. Going head first is a big mistake. You can probably make it alive, but this is not Call of Duty. It's a story driven game with the occasional shootout if you want to. On my second playthrough I went on a killing spree and took down almost everyone. And to be honest, every time I was on the edge, you can carry just two weapons, you die fast, your health doesn't regenerate too quickly and enemies can be quite accurate, even from far away. All this kept me on my toes, especially on later levels where more mercenaries are present. Headshots are your best bet, not only because how little they are, but also for ammo conservation. The bullets are scarce, but not to the point of frustration. You can take the weapon left from dead enemy but if you have to get into a big shootout in a wide open space you have to be very accurate because you probably won't be that fast to pick up a new weapon. Hitting movie targets in the head is difficult and missing that shot leads to him alerting everyone. Again the game is not designed for big battles. 
The setting is on the realistic side, so if you are going with the mentality that this is something in the vein of Call of Duty, you will have a bad time. Levels are linear by design, but some allow at least two different ways to progress. Also, they are wide enough for you to hide from the enemies. This applies to the memories. The asylum is mostly for exploration with some occasional shooting. As for design, it's fantastic. The levels in the memories have more urban environments, warehouse, abandoned building, spray painted with graffiti with dirty or broken windows. Others send you to a high-tech facility or you are trekking in the woods with part of walls from torn down building, a distant memory of civilization. Now it's just mercenary guarding the area. A personal favorite is the asylum. At some parts it's dark and gloomy, keeping you on the edge, moving slowly, wondering what's around the corner. The lack of music is making it scarier, but when the sound kicks in, it makes you sit on the edge. Other parts have the sun shining through the muddy windows, all with iron bars. There is no way out. The light makes you feel safe for a moment, but don't let this fool you. The place has cells with prisoners, mad, deranged, talking nonsense, shouting or singing, making you feel unsafe and small between the decaying walls. Some are running freely, ready to kill you without hesitation. Wooden mannequins are everywhere, making you feel unnerved and look constantly over your shoulder, wondering if they are alive. For years, no one stepped beyond the front door. The place exists in its bubble of madness. Peekaboo. I see you. How many of these fuckers are there? The story and atmosphere are nothing without the sound design. One word can describe it. Outstanding. I never heard such an amazing live mixing of music with environmental sounds. I'll provide a link in the description with technical explanation by the composer Olivier de Rivière. People knowing much more about music will appreciate it. His work on Get Even deserves more attention. The music managed to evoke happiness, sadness, fear, tension and sell the game. There is something quite fitting in the music. It's implemented perfectly in here? every situation. No wonder I love the music. Behind his back, Olivier de Rivière composed music for Remember Me, for which he gets an award, The Council, Vampire, A Plague Tale, Innocence, Greedfall and many more. His next two projects are Streets of Rage 4 and Dying Light 2. I can't wait to hear his music in those two games. I notice more details which add so much to the atmosphere, like cold breathing. When you are getting close to an NPC, it quickens, making every stealth encounter tenser. The game is developed from the ground up with Auro 3D in mind. It's a technology for three-dimensional sound. Of course, I turn it on and I'm not audiophile, but it's amazing. You can tell from which direction the sound is coming. Everything is so organic. Blending sounds in a coherent mix is something everyone should hear. I've never experienced anything like it. The Farm 51 are aware that the sound is extremely important for them to tell an emotional story. The music has to be on par with everything happening on the screen to push the storytelling. Sound effects shouldn't be anything less than great, but what is a great story without a great performance from the actors? This is another place where the game excels and improves. The whole cast did an outstanding job, but the heavy lifting is up to two people you'll hear the most, black and red. Red is calm, collective and smart, already taking into account everything. At some point in the game he is quite sinister. On the other hand, you can tell black has seen and done stuff, not everything legal. Tough guy with gruff voice, not easily threatened, not lightly taking orders, cold inefficient, but also quite confused and scared. The actors show a real range of emotions during the whole game. I think this is an underrated game. It does so many things right and it's such a massive improvement over Deadfall Adventures. It's like a different studio made the game. But this is what passion for your work can do. You can tell a lot of love and care went into this project. Music is sublime, the story is touching, the vocal performance is top notch. But what else stands out is the graphics, more specifically the levels. In terms of quality, the NPCs are lacking a bit, but the main characters are done in an amazing details. The Farm 51 used scanning technology and there are moments which I won't spoil, the characters look very real. As Half-Life 2, Get Even have a similar way of storytelling. There are cutscenes that take away the control from you, but there are also these that are projection of what people were talking and that way moving the narrative forward. The way the dev did it allowed them to be creative and not compromise the narrative or any other aspect of the game by spending a lot of money on cutscenes. 
In terms of the level design, most of the levels are linear with some light exploration if you want to gather more clues. The Dave used the same scanning technology for the levels and managed to make the atmosphere even more dreary than it is. The lack of bright colors combining with abandoned buildings full of graffiti or the rainy outdoor sessions makes the game realistic approach and an amazing experience. The main menu music sets the tone of the game and its fittingly named consequences. If someone asks me are video games art, I will show him this game. This is the definition of hidden gem. I haven't played a game in recent memory that touched me emotionally and hooked me from the beginning. It's worth a be at any price.